What's going on everybody? Thank you so much for jumping into this video today. My name is Danny Coldblood, aka my music vidiot. And I am joined today with user My Name is Mittens. He is somebody that has definitely been indulging in the Grand Theft Auto 5 Chiliad mystery and as of recently been making videos concerning such. I've been liking the different style and the approach that he's uh, using while taking action on covering this mystery, guys. And I think you guys will, too. So if you want to check out his channel, definitely um, at least give it a shot. I think you guys will like it. Uh, the description for his channel will be in uh, the description. So definitely click on the link. And uh, Mittens, how you doing today, man? I'm doing good, man. It's a pleasure to be here. I appreciate you having me on. Oh, no problem, man. No problem at all. Um, like I said, guys, I think you'll definitely enjoy his videos. I uh, recently was uh, checking out my Twitter, and he had sent me a message containing a video. And, you know, half the time you don't know what to expect when somebody does that. Um, so I checked out his video, and I was actually very surprised. He, uh, he uh, had some good coverage, and it's, like I said, like a different approach than normal people uh, usually take. He's not just uh, showing a bunch of GTA 5 clips of like racing around the town while he goes over some kind of narrative he's actually doing some very informative stuff i really enjoy it he's going back to rockstar's past um a lot he he focuses a lot on the stuff that rockstar has done in the past and then relates it directly to um you know questions and definitely concerns that we have while looking at the grand theft out of five mystery so He's showing how the past connects to the present and how it can be used for the future when trying to solve the Chiliad mystery. Now, Mittens, one of the places that you were talking to me off camera was located right here in the city, and you had a really good point that you made. So let's go ahead and check that out first, and then we will um, continue the uh, discussion from there. All right, guys, here we are at the Department of Water and Power, City of Los Santos. This is where we are on the map. Been brought up uh, before by other YouTubers, other hunters, other people in general. And I've always thought it was a very interesting place. I've uh, even brought it up myself, and I've talked about how the hum from the different electrical boxes um, over in, inside of this uh, area over here, hum and stuff like that, and it reminds you of the Space Stalker and different things like that, but um, Mittens went ahead and brought up an idea that really uh, made me think, and I thought it was such a good idea, I wanted him to go ahead and um, tell everybody about it in this discussion video. So Mittens, if you want to take the lead on this and let everyone know what you, uh, what you had uh, planned out for this what you think that might happen all right so when you come into the electro electric uh, electrical facility uh, you find these transformers here which are putting out electricity from my point of view I never really thought much of this I just thought oh it's a cool little thing you can do you touch both sides and it electrocutes you but then we got thinking and I kind of spit this out off camera with you was that I thought it was a positive and a negative and then you brought up a great point saying well if it's a positive and a negative yada da 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 etc etc um, I believe both of these ends are positive because you don't have to touch a certain side you can touch the left side and then the right and you'll get electrocuted or you can touch the right side and then the left so I'm under the impression that both sides of these transformers are positively charged so if we were to touch one side of the transformer, we would then be positive, positively charged. And if you take the positive charge and complete the circuit by touching a negative end, the electricity will throw th flow through your body and go out the other end, go out your arm, your hand, whatever the case may be. So with that being said, I think we need to positively charge ourselves and then possibly punch a a power breaker or something else in the game that has to do with electricity and we can complete the circuit. I love that idea. I, I seriously love that idea because the game 
is recognizing that you have that charge in your body. For you to be able to walk on the one side and even jump off, you know what I mean? And then walk around, do whatever, and then come back, okay, get on, and then walk on that same side again and have nothing happen so you know that you are you are charged. Okay, this side is what charged you. Right now we are charged. But as soon as you go to that other side, which will be the opposite of that charge, whatever is you know, positive or negative, you go over here, zap. You're shocked. You are shocked. So, no matter which side you pick, you're starting off by putting yourself on something that is charging you. Now, we are... <laughs> went straight up and down. That was funny. But we are charged. As soon as you walk on there, you're charged with electricity. And there's so many clues in this game that uh, refer to electricity and uh, refer to energy and even solar power. And there's so many different types. And then we got those, like, red uh, electrical bolts, okay, that are rare that you can find all throughout the map, okay? You can find... These and it just so happens that there's a red one right in the same location showing that there is some sort of significance here since there is at least one or more rare electrical bolt that is red. The fact that we have these here and that they do that really makes me think that maybe we can do something with the space docker, um, maybe something else, maybe even something to do with the train tracks. I'm not sure, but. Having ourselves charged with electricity is very, very, very suspicious to me because why, why? Like why would the game remember that, hey, he stepped on that so he's charged, so the next time he steps on it, he's gonna get zapped. You know what I mean? There's no way that they would even have that in the game unless it was important. So I do think that there is definitely um, a plausible uh, theory to your uh, your opinion on this, man. I really do think that there is um, a lot of good ideas that can spawn from this. Maybe we can test some stuff out. Maybe if you guys that are watching, if you guys try anything out, let us know. Because I think it's so rad that you can walk on this stuff and be charged. And then, zap. You die. We know that a lot of the signs in Grand Theft Auto mentioned 1.21 gigawatts which is mentioned in back to the future they need 1.21 gigawatts of electricity so this very well could be a step in the easter egg it could be something that we can use to trigger something uh there's definitely like you said there's a lot of things that we could do with this and i think we we need to think a little bit more outside of the box and not just think oh if you step on both sides you'll be electrocuted it's a little uh, a joke or whatever I definitely think like you said we could we could take something from this I definitely do think so man because it's, it's the whole entire fact that they they put that in the game and it's not like something that they've uh, they've they've told us about or they've mentioned They're like hey guys you know my job for those electrical boxes is if you touch both ends you're gonna get a zap they don't even tell you so it's something that's you would have to figure out on your own like a subliminal little Easter egg or whatever that whatever you want to consider it But it's the fact that you touch one side and then touch the other and you will get zapped So that is definitely interesting to me I think it's definitely worth mentioning and bringing up to people if you guys come up with anything from that Let us know in the comments below and I'm uh, definitely all ears when it comes to any kind of um, comments relating to this Another cool thing about this place here, Mittens, is that it's it's kind of hidden. If you look at the door, it, I mean, driving past it, you kind of want to even realize that you can go in there. I mean, I didn't even know about that door for a long time. I knew that you can get in there. I used to take a helicopter and drop down in there, but um, the entrance, if you want to go in on foot, it's, it's hidden. So it's definitely an interesting location, to say the least. Now, one of... Uh, the things that you were talking about off camera with me that you wanted to bring up with this video was a location that's actually right near this one. So let's make our way over here and um, if you want to go ahead and talk about what you wanted to bring up concerning this location and then we can go from there. Of course. So nearby the bus station where you take CHOP 
with Franklin and Lamar during a mission early on in the story mode. Uh, you take Chop to the bus station while chasing down one of the ballas you guys are going to kidnap, and so on and so forth. But uh, the mascot for this bus company is a wiener dog, and this is an obvious pun on Dash Hound, which is a real-life bus company. Um, so there's a connection right there. We have an immediate connection. We take Chop to this bus station, and their logo just so happens to be a wiener dog. Um, I find these statues really interesting. First of all, I find them interesting because they're in chrome, and they're kind of scattered throughout the city. You don't really hear too many people talk about them. Uh, they're definitely s symbolic in some way, shape, or form. I mean, there's a reason why they put giant chrome statues uh, over the map. So I definitely think we need to maybe look at these in a different way, opposed to just looking at them as giant chrome statues. I think they could maybe tell us something, or might even possibly be leading us somewhere. Um, so definitely something to look at and kind of think a little bit more about. Like I said, not too many people talk about them, so I, I think there's more there to it. Uh, the other statues I, I, are very interesting. Yeah, I, I like what you're saying here about this because you got the three different statues, guys, and we will definitely show you guys in a second here um, the other two, but they are all animals. You got the dog, you got, you got the, uh, the eagle, and you got the horse, and we know that we can turn into animals with the peyotes. And one thing that I wanted to mention before, I, I brought up um, cars, the rare cars, guys. If you guys haven't seen my rare car videos, definitely look them up. But this peyote is um, basically it's a rare car in this game. It's very hard to find to have the hard top on it. A lot of them that you find won't have a top. So if you want to find the hard top, it's a little bit more rare to go get your hands on. And there's something I noticed on here and if you look closely at the top of it, the part that makes it a rare car at the top, you have an image of a peyote next to the word peyote. And this car has been here since the day the game came out. Okay, so were they foreshadowing again? Were they giving us more clues that they were going to add in peyotes that turned us into animals in the game? Were they going to foreshadow that we can use Benny's as a place to hook up our cars with different stuff like zebra seats and different types of words and plates on the back of our cars? Like you can see, like I have the Los Santos, um, like metallic, whatever the hell that is. I can't remember what they call it, but the Los Santos words on the back. You can only do that with... Um, the cars that they put in Betty's. This is the only exception, this peyote. It's the only exception. So, this peyote being a rare car, and then holding secrets, I guess, that were, you know, were added in later on in the game as updates were given to us. I think that's just another way of us seeing that foreshadowing is a big part of Rockstar. So when we find clues, guys, don't just think you're going crazy or that you're having far-fetched ideas sometimes they're giving us stuff that they're going to do in the future and it's up to us to be able to see that and understand it so we can take the clues and follow them the way that we're supposed to let's go ahead and check out the next metal or chrome animal statue in the game and we'll be right back with you guys all right guys so here we are at the eagle and there's eagles all over this game. There's one holding a key at the noose. Right now we are at the location of the IAA and the FIB building. This is another chrome or platinum statue. We got an eagle holding the world or landing on the world or catching the world. Um, I like that the fact that this is at not only the IAA but the FIB building as I brought up in my Unleashing the Truth video that FIB, okay, can be rela related to another uh, thing that we just talked about, peyotes. We, uh, we have Bigfoot as a peyote, and if you rearrange the letters in Bigfoot, it can also say go to FIB. So that's interesting. 
more on that video I'll put the description um, I'll put the link in the description for those that want to watch that video but uh, is there anything that you wanted to go on about this location mittens um, well I just wanted to say I've seen some people have a misconception that this is a Phoenix in my opinion it looks more like a eagle and we have the IAA logo which has an eagle on it um, so this statue could be considered symbolic because he has the world in his claws and that's basically saying the IAA runs the world it's overlooking the earth it's overlooking Los Santos so that's just something... the eye in the sky <laughs> exactly it's just something else to think about there's everything's placed there for a reason this statue is the only animal statue slash chrome statue that it has uh, something else besides the animal so there's definitely some backstory to it and I think it has to do with the IAA logo and just basically them controlling everything along with the FIB yeah definitely it is definitely a strange um, location guys and you do have the red white and blue here on the floor uh, below it it's in a circular shape and I've had people even mention um, Marvel. They've said that this looks like the Captain America shield to them. So a lot to think about when you're at this location. I uh, definitely want to hear your guys' input on anything to do with these different locations that we're touching on. So while we're still on the subject, let's hit the last place of interest, and that is the horse. So here we are at the uh, at the wonderful horse here, Platinum Chrome Horse at Portola Drive. This has always sparked my curiosity. Mins, anything you want to talk about with this? Well, like I said about the other ones, they're all very symbolic in their own ways. Uh, I guess what you could take from this one, this horse statue, is the one thing that we know about horses and rock stars red dead redemption that was a big part of red dead redemption you could ride a horse you could capture them um and that kind of relates to a lot of other things that we've been talking about we'll tell you guys about that in a short bit but uh it definitely relates to red dead redemption and ironically john marston is one of the characters you can make as your father and online while creating a character so they're definitely doing a nod to Red Dead, but I think there is more to it. Like I said before, these are very symbolic and they're strategically placed. This horse statue is basically on the exact same street where we do our first heist, which is the jewelry store. And everybody in the game should have saw this. I mean, it, it's blatantly there. It's It sticks out like a sore thumb, like you say. And I mean, I, I just think there's more to it. Uh, there's no horses in the game, there's no horses out in the country or anything like that. But uh, I, I definitely think there's something going on with these chrome statues. I do too as well. You were talking about um, Red Dead Redemption and it's funny because this relates to Michael a lot and Michael's the one that, if anything, I believe shares uh, the most common um, features as John Marston. Uh, with the shooting and a special ability. We'll talk about that in a second, guys. But we also have um, something I brought up in a previous video. Um, uh, it was called Portal on Portola Drive. And <clears throat> as you look at this little sign here underneath the horse, this plaque, it says Faswan Robert Chawa. Now, this is an Easter egg to a sculptor in real life. And we have those different sculptures of the, uh, the torso okay which is Easter egg is directly related to and that's in Michael's house so we have more connections um, if you guys want to know more about that check out my video um, portal on Portola Drive I'll throw that in the description as well and uh, we have the mural of the horse also in the subway right around the corner right on the same street and you know if it's leading us underground that makes total sense as I just did a 55 minute video that's jam packed with insane information talking about underground tunnels and uh, how real life in Los Angeles there was an underground network that was uh, ran by the corrupt government 
or not government, but basically like the mayor and the police. And we were just at the IAA, okay, and FIB, where the other statue was, another uh, platinum statue of an animal, an eagle. And it just so happens in this game, they're, ran, um, they're running things, you know, not so um, nicely, if you will. Like, they're not, not so legal. In, in, in the best of words. So, there's so many connections here, a lot of different stuff. Also, back in the day when these tunnels were active underground, they were using horses and wagons to travel the streets. So, I mean, there's so many different ways you can find uh, relevancy. I mean, it's definitely not short on meaning, that's all I can say. I definitely think it's interesting that you brought up these three different locations that happen to be three different animals and how they definitely relate to the past um, in real life and in Rockstar's past with their different games. And that is one thing that you do well, Mittens. You you go back to Rockstar's past a lot. Um, you focus on it and you bring uh, relevancy to questions that we have uh, in the present with Rockstar and the mystery. And um, that is why I want everyone to check out your channel because I think that you come up, come to this uh, mystery, you approach it with a different angle, and it's one that we can use. We definitely can use more people focusing and, you know, seeing their knowledge on Rockstar's past. Is there anything uh, that you want to bring up concerning um, the uh, connections between the characters that we have in this game and the characters we have in uh, previous games uh, that might not just be Grand Theft Auto, but also games Rockstar has made? I know off-camera you brought up some good connections with different special abilities and such. I am definitely down for touching on that a little bit if you want to before we uh, head out. Yeah, for sure. So we have obviously, like you said, we have Michael and he kind of has the same ability as John Marston. He has the dead eye. Uh, he's also kind of related to Max Payne in a sense with Max Payne's bullet time, being able to slow things down. Um, I've never actually got to play Smuggler's Run, but Smuggler's Run is strictly a racing game where you race around in dune buggies and complete deliveries on a time limit. Um, I'm not sure if there was a special ability in that game, but it, it could relate to Franklin. I mean, Franklin is all about it, cars. He's all about slowing it's down time. So. Not, 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 not to interrupt you, but as you say that, man, that really sparks my attention with... You know, Smuggler's Run, and that has a Doom Buggy, even on the on the front of the box of the case, okay? Yeah, do you want to mention my, that? Yeah, definitely. In my previous yeah, video, okay. guys, okay. I um, I definitely brought up Dune Buggies and Gas Buggies, how they're, how they're, you know, ran on gas. They're Gas Buggies, and the Space Docker's a Gas Buggy, and how relevant it is when looking at this mystery and talking about underground tunnels so I don't want to go into full detail you guys will have to definitely take the time to watch the video but there is definitely connections even with Rockstar's past and the connection to the tunnels so sorry for interrupting you minutes I just wanted to throw that out there yeah that's not a problem I was I was thinking the same thing so I'm glad you made that that connection and then we have um, Trevor Trevor I'm not really sure what what game he's supposed to relate to or what relevancy he has to the past nonetheless there's three characters and three special abilities and that's a big thing for grand theft auto those are two uh milestones for grand theft auto we have the three characters which was never done before in a single game yes we had three characters in grand theft auto 4 but those were two different dlcs added along with the main game so they were testing this theory out a while ago and this just goes back on you know what I'm saying that I think the past games definitely have some information we can take. They were trying out this different perspective uh, idea. They were trying out three different characters. They never had special abilities in the last game, so that's definitely something that's fresh and new to the series. And I definitely think the special abilities might have something to do with the triggers. Maybe uh, Franklin has to get somewhere in a certain amount of time, so he can slow down time and make his car faster. Maybe Michael has to shoot some certain things uh, in a certain amount of time or quickly. Uh, then we have Trevor who has the rage ability and I think this ability is crazy I mean, I've been in Fort Zancudo a bunch of times and every time I go there I take Trevor We know there's a lot of connections with Trevor and the Fort Zancudo base But I mean he can get literally shot by a tank 
and he just gets up and brushes it off like it's nothing. You don't lose any health. So I definitely think we have to take something from these special abilities. Like I said, it's a milestone for Grand Theft Auto. They added these in specifically for this game. It's never been done before. So I definitely think maybe Trevor has to go somewhere at Fort Zancudo possibly or somewhere that has high security because he can do that with his special ability. I really like that a lot. You know, uh, just recently Trippy Commentaries was talking about uh, Trevor and how, you know, something that would normally kill any of the characters, if he's in rage mode, it does not kill him. He can definitely survive longer and uh, withstand more of a uh, blast or of a hit. And, you know, Fearless Force recently mes me mentioned that uh, Trevor might be the key to this whole entire mystery. And that's actually something that I... Um, started to come up with the same conclusion as I was doing my tunnel video I started finding a ton of connections to Trevor and why he is definitely very important and I will be making a video very soon guys so stay tuned for that but if we're all you know all of us hunters are coming up with the same kind of conclusions and we're all definitely noticing the same things at the same times and we're all moving along the same pace Maybe we're all on the same path and we are definitely getting closer as a unit or a whole. So I definitely like what we have uh, talked about today. I like where we're going with this and I can't wait to see what's going to uh, unravel, guys. So thank you guys all for watching. Thank you guys um, all for uh, showing the support and uh, all the all the stuff that you guys have been doing. You guys have been so great. Definitely give some love over on Mitten's YouTube channel. It's... Uh, his link will be in the description. He's got a very good way of going at this mystery. I think it's pretty cool. He's got my support. Hopefully he has yours. Thank you guys so much. It's been an honor and a pleasure. I'll see you guys in the next video or broadcast. And if you guys want to check out more broadcasts and get them first, definitely hit me up on Twitch as I'll be doing uh, a lot of my stuff on Twitch and then uploading it directly to YouTube. So if you want the sneak peek, the first look, the exclusive, Go to twitch.tv slash musicvidiot and hit the follow button. Thank you guys so much. If you're new, definitely subscribe so you don't miss out on any new future content or awesome mystery explorations. And if you like this video or it helped you out a lot at all, hit me up with a like. Hit Mittens up with a like. Definitely go to his channel. Thank you guys so much. You're awesome. I love you all. Thank you so much. Ta-ta. And as mother fucking always. Peace.